As you can see, this really looks no different from the previous example, but when you stretch the window, the weight of the buttons becomes apparent. As I'm sure you know, the same effect could have been achieved when the window was first open by making a call to set size from inside the program. Another useful parameter is the one that instructs a component on how it should fill its grid. It can be instructed to always fill its grid vertically or horizontally, and in this example, the buttons are all set to fill their grids in both directions. The default is for no filling at all to be set or to take place, but we set every button in this example to both, which means when the grid expands, the buttons will expand to fit its space both vertically and horizontally. And we've set these weight values of the second buttons to four, both horizontally and vertically. This will have a direct effect on the relative size of the grid as it expands. Here, I'll show you. Here you can see the buttons all expand to fill their sections of the grid, and you can see that the expansion is a little uneven. The button with the added weight is awarded more space. Let me expand it on out and you can get a better idea of the relationships. The weight value of this button is 4 horizontally, and so you can see it is about 4 times the size of the buttons with a weight of 1. Also, this same button has a vertical weight of 4, and that makes it about 4 times as high as the other buttons in the vertical position. When the window was small, this ratio was not so apparent because the buttons have a minimum size to contend with. I want to show you one more thing. A component can be spread across more than one grid square. Now, in this example, we create new grid bag constraints object for each button. This is to point out that if you use a grid bag constraint object, it has values set in it other than the default. To overcome this, you can either make certain that you set every value every time or that you create a new constraints object for each button as I've done here. For this button, we've set a couple of parameters we haven't seen before. The grid width and height values default to 1, but for this one, we set the height value to 3. This means this component will cover 3 cells. For this button, we set the width to 4, so the button will expand itself sideways to cover 4 cells. And this isn't all of the possible settings. You should experiment a little to see how it all works and try the iPad X and iPad Y settings to insert space around the components. And there are other controls that will set components in different locations within their cells.